The Witcher 1, 2, and 3 make for a very unique trilogy. When it began, CDPR were a brand new studio making their first ever game. They'd given a certain author less than $10,000 for the rights to The Witcher, and the story was being figured out as they went along. Who knew at the time that there'd even be one sequel, let alone a third game that would sell over 40 million copies? Because of all those changes in the studio growth behind the scenes, The Witcher trilogy is made up of three games that, while incredible on their own, don't exactly fit together at times story-wise, and honestly, phrasing it like that is an understatement. Why is that relevant? Well, as I'm sure you've heard, CD Projekt recently announced that The Witcher 1 is getting a full-blown remake, and with that upcoming remake comes an opportunity to not only improve the first game, but the entire trilogy. Before I get into that though, I do need to thank YouGov for sponsoring this video. If you want to make some extra money, YouGov will pay you to fill out short surveys. Instead of wasting bits of spare time doom scrolling through an online wasteland like Twitter, why not make some cash while voicing your opinion on heavy hitting issues that matter, like whether or not you find Shrek the Musical to be a worthy adaptation of the hit animated film. YouGov is completely free, and their surveys, which cover everything from politics to general entertainment, can be filled out in just a handful of minutes. I did one while waiting for a class to start the other day. And once you're done, you'll be sent points which can be used to redeem gift cards of your choosing. I filled up my car with a tank of gas from these surveys, if that tells you anything. If interested, the link to YouGov is in the description. Okay, to start, I need to back up a second and point out that while CD Projekt are the ones who announced The Witcher 1 Remake, the hands-on development is actually being handled by Fool's Theory, another studio also based in Poland that, according to CDPR, includes a team of Witcher development veterans. Now, if you're maybe a little skeptical about that claim and are wondering who exactly the Witcher veterans are, I did some digging because for all we know, this team of Witcher vets could consist of the writer responsible for the ending of Reasons of State and some guy who interned at CD Projekt for three weeks in spring of 2009. Thankfully though, that is not at all the case. I was a bit nosy and went digging, and it's good news. The studio CEO and project lead was the senior quest designer on both The Witcher 2 and 3. The studio's primary design director worked on The Witcher 2 and was promoted to a full quest designer for the third game, and there's more beyond that. Some of the names at this studio are exactly the talent that people were worried about leaving CD Projekt in the first place, and now they're back in the mix on The Witcher remake and can tackle the game's most obvious flaws, like the dated gameplay and the voice acting that more often than not sounds like it was recorded by someone's drunken uncle that was kidnapped off the street and held at gunpoint. Anyway, something that I thought was pretty notable that I haven't seen anyone else mention is what this new studio said in a post on LinkedIn. This wasn't on any of their other social media, but they said they're focused and ready to tell parts of Geralt's story anew. Which brings me around to what I really want to talk about, and what this remake can truly bring to the table, which is the incredible story potential here. While Fool's Theory is developing the remake, CD Projekt is taking full creative supervision, and I would be willing to bet just about anything that story-wise, this is not going to be a one-to-one -one remake. The major story beats, sure, they'll probably stay the same, but they have an amazing opportunity here to smooth over plot holes and inconsistencies that give any fan that cares a major headache trying to overlook. Case in point, Yennefer and Ciri. I'm sure I'll get a War and Peace length comment attempting to explain why it actually makes sense, but certain characters not mentioning the two most important people in the world to a Geralt that has no memory has always been majorly distracting. And the writers of the first game have even said that the only reason for that isn't an in-universe one. It's because it was too much for them to handle at the time story-wise with the baggage from the books. That's why in the first game, Geralt is an amnesiac, Triss acts like Yennefer, and the character Alvin is basically Ciri. It was just simpler and less of a buy-in for anyone who wanted to play the first game without knowing anything about the series. That awkwardness once the story continued is what led to events from the first game in many cases getting completely ignored later. Something else that's so interesting to think about is the way certain character reintroductions are going to be handled. Because while moments like Geralt reuniting with Zoltan and Dandelion are interesting and handled well as is, they have so much more potential now that the writers know where the story is going. In the interest of avoiding spoilers, I'll just say that Dandelion seeing Geralt again after several years apart should be an earth-shattering shock to him. But because the first game is a little odd, and I do love it for it, you get one brief interaction with deadpan delivery, at least in the English version, and then that shock is never mentioned again, it's just business as usual. And you can potentially even miss their reunion completely, in which case Dandelion will never acknowledge the absolute bombshell of Geralt being back. Those moments redone and re-recorded with The Witcher 3 voice cast have almost unlimited potential, and that in and of itself is another amazing element to this remake. The first Witcher had an almost completely different voice cast from the second and third game, and as this remake is definitely not going to be reusing the first Witcher's voice acting, they have the opportunity to make the characters' voices totally consistent across the trilogy. 
I mean, Geralt stays the same as it is, but just about every other main character in The Witcher 1 that reappears later was recast. Triss, Zoltan, Dandelion, Shani, Foltest, Lambert, you name it. The only notable exceptions are Vesemir and Eskel, who are barely in the first game to begin with, and also Taller, who's a bigger character in The Witcher 1 than he is in 3, and who can also die in the first game but magically be alive by the third, another thing I suspect will be changed. Anyway, imagining certain moments redone with the amazing voice cast of the second and third game, and with the awkwardness of The Witcher 1's low budget completely stripped away, that excites me more than just about anything. Maybe I'm getting too specific and nerdy, I just love the story, and the idea of making it more cohesive and solid while filling in some gaps is really exciting to me. I haven't even mentioned the almost equally exciting likelihood that side content will be fleshed out quite a lot. There's a ton of side questing in the first game that I think will likely be reworked, expanded upon, or in some cases replaced with more substantial contracts. I have a feeling that they'll really be going for The Witcher 3 feel, meaning that almost every corner of the world will be occupied, and The Witcher 1 has a lot of unused real estate that is just begging to be filled with new side quests and details. To shift gears a bit before I wrap up this video, I should mention that I have seen the concern and outright occasional complaining from people who are already convinced that this will suck and that the studio handling the remake isn't capable. And so far, I'll just say that I don't really get where they're coming from. My outlook on it right now is completely positive. At the end of the day, even if somehow they screw it up, nobody is going to take your copy of the original away. You can always play it. Of course, there are some valid concerns slash maybe not ideal expectations I could point out. Like, I think capturing the unique atmosphere of the original will be a real challenge, but it absolutely can be done. For CDPR, I think this Witcher 1 remake is going to serve as a pretty amazing safe bet slash security blanket for the franchise. If for some reason the first entry in the new trilogy doesn't hit, this Witcher 1 remake should be a surefire success to fall back on. The potential is there for this to be one of, if not the most successful remake of all time. It's a really unique situation where 95% of people, and I think that's a conservative estimate, who played the beloved third game have not even touched the first. For one, it's only available on PC, and two, it's just a game people want to play but give up on because of the gameplay. I've heard it a million times in my comments because I recommend the first two games constantly, and people will report back on The Witcher 1 and say I tried but it wasn't for me. For almost all intents and purposes, CDPR will be marketing a brand new experience to the vast majority of their players. And not only that, it'll be a new release with the fan favorite characters. Want more Geralt that you probably aren't getting in the new trilogy? Well, there you go, it's right there with The Witcher 1 Remake, which is why I feel like this works as an easy fallback for the franchise. We don't know what this new trilogy will be, but based on past comments, it seems unlikely it'll be Geralt. If CDPR sticks to that, you gotta respect it in the sense that it is a risk. If they wanted a fully guaranteed smash hit, it's undeniable that just using Geralt again, which let's be real wouldn't be nearly as difficult as people make it out to be, would be the safer option. But if they're going with something new, this Witcher remake keeps the brand and the most iconic and valuable characters relevant and in the mainstream for whenever CDPR revisits them, which despite what has been said in the past, I think is inevitable. Well, that does it for today. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like as it helps to get these videos out there, and feel free to subscribe as I have a ton of exciting Witcher content planned for the next couple of months. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.